Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to CNC Reviews this week. Now, if you aren't familiar with CNC Reviews, my name is Caleb Johnston, and here on CNC Reviews, we basically we review movies, uh, which... Also, again, if you're not familiar with us, they're not like current movies or anything. It's just on Netflix because we don't live in the same health country. More of us live, he lives in Canada, I live in the United States. So it's just Netflix is easier. So we'll review kind of older, you know, classic movies, which we're reviewing two classic movies this week. And it's just, you know, that kind of stuff. We talk about wrestling at the end. You know, we always have a weekly top five and discuss Raw, a pay per view, if it was on Sunday. Uh, we also have movie, TV, and video game news, depending on what I've been able the little snippets of news I've been able to pick up within the last week. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, I'm Caleb Johnson, I'm your main host, and I'm the creator of the show, and I'm, of course, my normal co-host Cameron is still on, uh, break from the show, as he has been for about seven or eight weeks now, and I'm joined here by my interim guest host and the host of Wrestling with Mac, that is Jamie Lee Mac. Jamie, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good, and people, we're working, we're working with what we got here, Okay. Okay, we can't we can't afford to go out and see all these fancy ass new movies. We gotta wait till they're out. We gotta, I mean, we just gotta wait until they're on Netflix. We can only afford Netflix people. So, like, you know, we can't we can't just. I don't have a car. Exactly, and you know what? I'm not taking a bus to go see a movie by myself. That's just weird. Then everyone's gonna be like, "Why is Seth Rogen here seeing this movie all by himself?" Exactly. You don't see Seth Rogen going to a movie by by himself. Now, if he does, if he does, that's okay because he's Seth Rogen. But yeah, exactly. if he doesn't, that's okay too because he's Seth Rogen. But anyways. And he's Seth Rogen. Right. He can do what he wants. Exactly. Yeah, but nonetheless, Jamie, has any, before we start off the show, has anything been interesting going on with you lately? Nothing. You know what? Nothing really. You know, just... Uh, you know, enjoying, I guess, the road to WrestleMania 30 is start, it's starting to pick up. Um, WWE has really saved WrestleMania 30 in the past couple of weeks. And, they really and, have. And you know what? I had a feeling that they would. Uh, Raw was fucking great this week. And, yeah, uh, but, uh, uh, but other than that, no, no, that's it. Yeah, uh, I haven't been up to much, you know, uh, just kind of hanging around. Uh, I started Six Feet Under, which is a good show. I watched, like, the first episode. Go check it out. If you want to see the dude who plays Dexter make out with a black dude, it's super awkward, but whatever. Did you get the uh, DDP Yoga there, too? Yes. Uh, actually, I was about to say that. Uh, I started DDP Yoga this week, and it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm going by the schedule, so I'm just doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right now, as you know, as my guide goes. So I'm only done Monday. Uh Tomorrow I'm gonna, you know, do the next day, you know, the whole thing. And like I said, whenever I first did it, uh, it was like 30 minutes, and it was really, it was enjoyable. Uh, I popped my back on accident, but it, that actually made my back feel better. I had back pains, so that was great. Uh, like I said it's just really cool. They got this whole food. They actually have a whole with a guy that comes with, uh, comes with the whole list of food. You know, I would say it's definitely worth a hundred bucks. I spent a hundred bucks on it. People, so it's it's completely worth it. People, yoga, yoga is the future of workout. I mean, it is. It really is. I mean, like people think. I mean, like, just like you know, people people just start sweating when they hear the term of like you know, gym or or hey, I'm or, or I hate working out near other people. Or, or hey, I'm going to the gym. Or oh my god, I have to lift all these weights. So, no, no, yoga yoga is the future of workout people. It's true. And the best part of DDP yoga, it's not, the best thing is it says it's not your mama's yoga. It's not. It's not this whole, like, oh, I'm going to do downward dog, uh, warrior, whatever, uh, warrior dog, one, I think. There's, um, uh, Hulk it up, I think. There's one, there, there's like one thing there. Yeah, there's lots of stuff like that. And then with DDP yoga, it's like, it's, it's like, you know, you use your entire body. And then there's the whole, like, my the workout I did was actually more of a tutorial that you do, and it was just thirty minutes, and I got a good workout of. I felt good, like my back wasn't hurt. My back is more straightened after just one night of doing the fucking tutorial, which is you're supposed to do on the first day. There you go. So if that, I mean, that's fantastic. I don't look like a goddamn hunchback in Notre Dame anymore. It's awesome. <laughs> it's great. Definitely, you know, if you have a hundred extra bucks lying around and you want to get into DDP yoga, is the way to go, man. I, I'm swearing by it now. Or, or. 
you want to save if you want to save your money apparently there's like a little promo code from the Steve Austin show and talk is Jericho just listen to those that guys. I did not use there's 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 some, there's some sort of promo code I actually pay attention to the ads here and there sometimes I'll skip over them but I mean like I've heard them mention it before I think you save a little bit I forget exactly how much you save if it's a dollar amount or a percentage amount either way you're saving money so definitely check out that and Save yourself a few bucks and get in shape. Yeah, like I said. And this uh, is coming from a well, guy that has no idea of what getting in shape is even like. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, anyway. Uh, like, I think that's probably, you know, uh, we, that's basically what we've been doing this week. But uh, now getting into the actual subject at hand before we just start talking about workout regimens. Uh, first thing, of course, we always start with the movie reviews. And the fir- we review two movies. Uh, we're, you know, whatever. Uh, so basically the first movie is... One I th- of them I did not uh, see, people. Just letting you know now. Yeah, one you didn't watch one. <laughs> I didn't... You didn't, I didn't have time. I didn't watch one. I was going to do it today, but then I realized, wait a minute, I actually have something to do today. So I didn't get it. Hey, don't worry, Jamie. It's not like Shave and Smiley, where uh, you uh, told me during the show you didn't watch something. <laughs> I'm a little bit more professional yeah. than that. Oh, yes, you're very professional. You told me uh, we got out of record... And we're talking, you were like, hey, I didn't watch it. I'm like, okay, that's cool. You were busy. <laughs> you weren't bullshitting me about how you were up until 3 in the morning with your dad watching movies. or, And, hey, you didn't watch Movie 43 instead. That's all that matters. Yeah, this is true. Ah, movie 43 is so awful. Like, we should review movie. We should review, review Movie 43 without even watching it. Because I've watched enough of that shitty movie. And we just talk about how shitty it is. I got through the first 30 minutes of it. There's one skit that I laughed at. And everything else was either too raunchy, just didn't make me laugh, or I thought, wow, if I sit here any longer, I'm going to need someone to put a cone on my head. Oh, so awful. But nonetheless, the first movie we are reviewing is The Spider-Man. Now, Spider-Man, this is the 2002 film starring Tobey Maguire, Christian Dunst, and the fucking amazing Willem Dafoe, and also James Franco was there. And Okay, I, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to start naming every. Oh, Randy Savage was in it, too. That was fucking awesome. Yes. Uh, basically, uh, if you don't know what Spider-Man is and the story of Spider-Man, then you had no childhood. Uh, but basically, the story of Spider-Man is very simple. <laughs> this dude who he's like, well, he's in high school. I guess, yeah, he's a senior in high school. Uh, you know, Tobey Maguire, Peter Parker. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to call him Tobey Maguire. I'm just going to call him Peter Parker. So Peter's all like, oh, you know, they're doing this whole science thing, and they're at some fucking taking a field trip or whatever, and he gets bit by a spider, and it's a radioactive or some shit, and of course, and... Basically, he become he starts being Spider Man like he can shove out of his hands and Peter Parker stuff. basically found found Peter Parker found the secret to or the secret to steroids. Oh my! He that got actually, he woke up and he was buff as shit. <laughs> Tobey Maguire he I will give Tobey Maguire so much credit for bulking up in all three movies whenever he had to do that. Oh yeah. Because he's if you see any of his other movies, he's a skinny little dude, and then for Spider Man, he just got this fucking he, he worked out like fucking crazy. Yeah, like, you know, Toby, Toby actually, he, you know, a lot of people give Toby shit in the Spider-Man series because, okay, this is the part that I've never understood. He makes Peter Parker look like a wimp. Isn't that the fucking point? If you've, like, the thing I hate is those people never read the comics. Exactly. Peter Parker is supposed to be a wimp. Toby, Toby Maguire did a fantastic job playing Peter Parker. Now... Do I, okay, who do I think is better, Toby or, who's the Andrew Gar- new guy that's playing, Andrew Garfield, okay, I prefer Toby over Andrew, but Andrew is still good. People call him a Toby, hipster, but like, he's that, not really a hipster, he's just got like a, he's just a modern teenager, that's kind of what he, they look He's, he's just got like a different style, that's it, I mean like it's a, I mean it's a new, it's a new generation. Yeah, exactly, and like. So, but basically, this I mean, new Spider-Man yeah. thing. Now, this was before Kirsten Dunst became a bitch. And as you know, in the third Spider-Man movie, not only in the movie was she a bitch, but backstage she was a bitch about it, and she was just the bitchiest ever. But Kirsten Dunst was pretty good in this movie, I'm not going to lie. I fucking hate her, but she wasn't bad at all in this movie. She was actually pretty... I don't know what it was. It's just, I thought she was... I, I thought she was good. I think she was amazing. But, you know, she was really good. Uh, for some reason, a scene where, despite the fact that this movie's PG-13... There's a scene where uh, there is Rainy and you can see her nipples, which I don't know how they didn't, how Sam Rainy was like, oh, he didn't notice that. But that totally happened. In a Spider-Man movie, Kirsten does actually show her nipples, so. 
Some people can ignore that, or but some people don't. A lot of people talk about it a lot, but it, just, it happened, and <laughs> that's basically that. Uh, like I said, you know, basically the other story is, you know, James Franco plays Harry Osborn, which I thought he was good. You know, I thought he was good. I, I like James Franco. A lot of people give him shit, but I like James Franco. Willem Dafoe played the Green Goblin. James Franco, Frank. I thought he was great. Um, it's like, I, I never I saw anything wrong with this performance. Now, really does the dude really in the Amazing Spider-Man two look like he's playing a little bit? That yeah, but it just I don't know. Who knows? Like uh, that movie is out for like five months or four months, and I'll check in. It's just one of those crazy things where like, and the Willem Dafoe playing the Green Goblin is fucking amazing. Like Willem Dafoe is I love him. He's a great actor. I love him in the Boondock Saints. I thought he was, he was not like a major role in uh, American Psycho, but he I enjoyed it for what it was. I don't know, I just really enjoyed it. And then it was just one of those weird things where... Well, he was playing... He was playing a fucking psychopath. And it was fantastic because the dude just went batshit trying to make a serum deal. Like most supervillain origins. And he, you know, became a fucking goblin, which was really cool. He started talking to himself in the mirror. And uh, I think, well, it's one of the things where I honestly believe Will Defoe outacted everyone in this movie. I just do. Like, I'm not saying there were not good actors in this movie. Defoe blew it out of the park with this one. Or he hit it out of the park. I don't know why I said blue. I thought... Well, I thought that he did, like... I mean, he did fan-fucking-tastic in this one. Uh, because, I mean, he made the Green Goblin look like a legitimate psychopath. Exactly. Like, he's one of the uh, best... Like, he's really one of the best, at least Marvel, uh, super villains portrayals. Because, like... I mean, they had, like, what, recent years they had Loki. Whoever fucking was Loki. Loki's amazing. Uh... I mean, you know, uh, Jeff Bridges was great as Obadiah Bane or whoever, whatever his name was in Iron Man 1. But, like, we haven't had a lot of memorable ones. I think Willem Dafoe was one. He did not get talked about enough. He was just... I thought, was, I thought he was the best villain in the entire, like, original Spider-Man trilogy. Yeah. It is, and then, uh... It's just one of those things where I think some of the best... The best scene I thought in this movie... Or, well, not the best scene, but, like, something I thought was great was... If you read the comic books, which, I swear to God, if, if I get bitches in the comment section saying I spoiled the current series, I haven't, but, okay, I don't even know if this is going to happen. I'm just pointing out, in the comic books, uh, there is a part where Gwen Stacy, who, if you don't know, that's Emma Stone's character in Amazing Spider-Man 2, or Amazing, the current ones, and uh, uh, her name's like Bryce Diamond or some shit like that, Bryce Dallas or something like that in the third Spider-Man movie. She said. Said, I'm probably right. Yeah, I think it's Bryce Dallas, yeah. And then, uh... Something ha- and basically in the comic books, uh, there's this whole deal where Green Goblin's like, "Oh yeah, hey, you get to choose between uh, your girlfriend Gwen Stacy, and you get to choose between like children or something." And he like takes the children first, and Gwen dies. They tried to re- they recreated that in this movie, but they took a lighter tone by having him you know say both of them. Which was, it was Mary Jane, of course, and I thought that was good because they set up kind of the lighter tone. Which don't get me wrong, I love darkness, but it, this was before superhero movies. Uh, this is before the Dark Knight, before every superhero movie felt the need to become dark and gritty. Mm. So this one, you know, and that's just the thing where they didn't feel the need to, uh, you know, kill Mary Jane. Well, you can't, Mar- killing Mary Jane off would be, make no sense, and they didn't have Gwen, so it was a weird thing. But I thought that was cool how they took something from the comics and they switched it up. And they did yeah. it in a good way, unlike Iron Man 3, where Iron Man 3 took the comics and raped it. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, that Iron Man three. Okay, I I will save my thoughts on Iron Man three for another day. Uh, <laughs> but basically, Spider Man. Like I said, okay. So, J- J- Jamie, I don't think I've even asked you about your full thoughts on this movie. Like, what are your overall thoughts? My full thoughts. Uh, the Spider Man trilogy is, pro- is my favorite superhero movie series. Uh, I don't give a shit. You people can say that that Batman's better, Iron Man's better, whatever. Spider Man is my favorite. I don't care. <laughs> Uh, I loved. I did, okay. I didn't like all three movies. The third one, I have a little, a little bit, di- a, a little bit of a different opinion on. But as for the first one, was great. Second one is my favorite. The third one, not so much. Yeah, same here. But, I think that's widely agreed upon. Yeah, but you know, uh, we are talking about the first one. But the first one, uh, it was great. I remember owning it on VHS for like the longest time, and I remember wearing it out till till it was like onion skin thin, and then <laughs> I and then I got the DVD, and you know this is I mean like I've always upgraded in technology a lot later than everybody else. I didn't get my first smartphone until 2012, so 
<laughs> Dude, that was the same year I got my first smartphone. There, it, so yeah, I've always um, I've always advanced pretty late in technology. So I think I got Spider-Man one on DVD. Uh, geez, I want to say two thousand. 2008, maybe? 2008, 2009, I want to say, around there. But, um, oh yes, and also one thing that we haven't mentioned um, is the, I think, uh, I don't think the song was used in the movie at all, but the song that was associated with it was Hero, with Chad Kroger and Josie Scott, I believe, who was from Saliva. Uh, that song. I probably heard that song, but I can't think of what uh, is off that the top song. That song is great. Um, I think it's on the extras on the. Uh, I believe it's on the DVD somewhere in the extras, uh, somewhere buried in there. But anyways, uh, but yeah. Um, as for the movie, loved it. It was great. Toby Toby plays a fantastic Peter Parker. I don't give a shit what anybody says. Uh, I just loved it. Yeah, I thought it was a good story because they took elements, and I think this is what every shoot superhero movie should do, is I think they should take elements of the comics, and they should change it up a little bit. Not like Iron Man 3 where they rape it, but you just take elements and you change it up. Like, they took a couple, like, I noticed a couple storylines they used, and they changed it. Like, they changed, you know, Gwen Stacy wasn't his first love interest, you know, shit like that. They changed it up. Uh, and it's just one of those things where... You know, the Goblin storyline, all that shit, uh, he died the same way he did in the comics, and that's not, okay, I assume people have watched Spider-Man, it's been out for 12 years, uh, so I <laughs> doubt that's a spoiler at all. And, and oh, if it's a spoiler that Spider-Man wins, then I don't, I don't understand what you people want. <laughs> like, what did you expect? Did you expect Spider-Man to end with Spider-Man being brutally murdered? No, that would make no sense, that would make the children cry. But... No, don't get me wrong, he could die. Like, like, I mean, it would be no issue with him dying in, like, the third one since it was the last movie, but not the time they didn't know it, but whatever. Okay, I'm getting too into, like, sequels and stuff right now, and I'm being weird about it. So, basically, uh, Spider-Man was a good movie. Uh, I thought it was the... I, I think it's the third best Spider-Man movie ever made, basically, because I like The Amazing yeah. Spider-Man, and Spider-Man 2 was fucking phenomenal. Uh, but, like I said, it was fantastic. I loved it. Randy Savage was in it. Bruce Campbell and Randy Savage were in it within five minutes of each other. If that doesn't make you love this movie... I don't know. Yes, I don't know Savage what is wrong with him. Randy Savage, that was... Bonesaw <laughs> is ready! Bonesaw. <laughs> oh, that was so awesome. But, and, and, I'm, and ah, you know, awesome. I'm so happy that they never went went with the human spider. <laughs> Such a stupid Oh my thing. god, that would have been so stupid. <laughs> that sounds like a failed gimmick from the 80s. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm even pretty though, sure that might have been a failed gimmick from the 80s. Even though there was Spider Lady, but that was played by Mula. But, anyways. Um, but, yeah, uh, I'm very happy that they went with Spider-Man, except besides the human spider. That was... <laughs> Basically, Randy Savage had a Hell in a Cell match with Spider-Man. Not many people can say that they have. Yeah, man, but Randy Savage, he's the one and only man to ever face a superhero in a Hell in a Cell match, and for that... We give, we take a swig of water for the working man. I, I don't know if that made any sense, but whatever. Unemployed man, if you're Kyle. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, go watch Wrestling with Mac, people. That, and anyway, that, and that is a quote from Wrestling with Mac, which is also on this channel. Um, every uh, every uh, Wednesday, I believe it's out. So both of your shows come out on Wednesday. <laughs> I've been involved on two uh, main shows. Do you but have, man? Like that's another story for another day. You, but that, I've, yeah, I've, I've you been, were on four at one point. Ah, uh, that was tiring. I mean, yeah, uh, it's just. Uh, oh my god! And I still have yet to have a sore throat. It's crazy. <laughs> I've ne I legitimately never gotten a sore throat from doing shows, and I've been doing it for ten months. I remember at one point when I was on the four shows, it was like, man, like. <laughs> I honestly think or thought thought of like you know what you know what maybe every Friday I should just take a vow of silence just to give my voice a rest. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so Spider Man, why don't you give it your thoughts uh, out of ten? Oh, I loved it. I'll give it a four. No, 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 no I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, um, I am gonna go ahead and give it a nine. 
I don't know why it. it yeah, I would give it, it an re- eight. Half. Yeah, um, it really takes a lot for me to give it a full ten, but I'm gonna go with a nine because I thought because I thought that it was that. Well, to quote you know who it was that damn good. Oh, quoting the Triple H's. Yes. Uh man, like I said, Spider Man. It was a good movie. I, I watched shit out of this movie when I was younger. Like I I have not watched this movie in a while. But you know, dude, I really want to watch this movie again, like this week. I didn't, I didn't rewatch it for this because I've seen it so many times. But fuck, yeah. I need to rewatch this movie. Mm. Oh yeah, me too. I own it on Blu-ray. I don't. I, I should just have a Spider-Man marathon. Uh, there you go. Anyway, I think I, I think I own all of them on Blu-ray. I know I own. I, I might then, not own three. And but... then and then just put the third one on mute. <laughs> put the third one on his background. Oh, uh, what's Topher Grace doing? Oh, nothing important. Okay. <laughs> Uh, basically, the next movie we have is the movie that uh, I'm going to keep short and sweet on the review because Jamie was unable to watch it, and that is Taxi Driver. Now, Taxi Driver is a very is a classic. It's got Robert De Niro. It was one of his first really big movies. Basically, the story is you guys it is about a taxi driver, and he just say. he's a he's a really different <laughs> he's a different take on life, and he's very like like he can't sleep. He doesn't sleep at all, so he like works like twelve four, to fourteen hour shifts. We're gonna count because he needs to find something to do, and he starts kind of stalking this chick, and eventually they go, they go on a date, and he takes her to a porn theater, and she gets really mad at him, <laughs> taking her to see a porno, and then, <laughs> and then, it's just one of those things where he just gets really pissed, and eventually he starts thinking. At the beginning of the movie, you hear him say like, like that he loves it when it rains because it washes the filth and like the scum off the street, and then he says, but the only issues is that the scum still walk on the street, and that is a. So he basically hates, like, just, like, pimps and prostitutes and shit. And, well, he doesn't hate prostitutes because, uh, as you know, later in the movie, he tries to help a prostitute, and that uh, leads up to the climactic moment. And basically the whole deal is, eventually he starts saying, he's like, okay, so he goes to this dude, and he buys a bunch of guns. He buys, like, I think three, and he starts, like, arming himself. Like, he doesn't wear a shirt underneath his jacket, and he just has these two holsters with these giant guns. And it's just insane. So he's basically like, oh, I'm going to... You know, I'm going to bring... Ju- so he becomes the Punisher. And basically, it's just... one. You know what? Robert De Niro... This was... The, you know what? To a degree, Taxi Driver is unofficially the greatest Punisher movie we've ever had. <laughs> because the three that have actually been made were utter fucking shit. Warzone was kind of funny. On, like, it was good on a comedic sense, but Jesus Christ. The one with Dolph Lundgren and the one with... Uh, that John Travolta was the main antagonist. That, that was terrible. Was, oh God, I hate those movies. Um, basically, it, it's just one of those deals where, like, it's it's one of those things where, like I said, Taxi Driver, the greatest unofficial Punisher movie ever, and Robert De Niro. Uh, the granted, he only like okay. I, I don't know if this is a spoiler, but whatever you know, I guess mute your thing. But uh, if it is a spoiler, then whatever. Uh, he only kills like five people in this movie, and it just went. It's just one. And so he starts helping this prostitute out, and he's all like, "Hey," but basically. Okay, uh, I'm going to basically explain my thoughts on it. I thought this was a fantastic movie. It's my kind of movie because this movie didn't need to start off with a giant explosion in the beginning. It, it took about 20, 25 minutes to really get set up. And basically the story it told was fantastic. It told the story of the dude who is obviously, not only is he an insomniac, he is clearly psycho. He's a psycho. He's a fucking psychopath. Or a sociopath. You know, he's more of a psychopath. And he just he's obsessive and weird. And he just decides, hey, I'm going to kind of like, you know... Uh, Start, you know, because he's like, hey, if people won't really clean up the streets, then I'll clean up the streets. Uh, and it's just crazy. And in the end of it, you know, he's considered a hero because of everything. And it's crazy because, like I said, it's just one of those weird things. Like, this movie was fantastic. About De Niro, this is the best I've ever seen from De Niro. Like, yeah, pretty much. Like, don't get me wrong, I love the Fokker movies, but that was he wasn't really acting. He was just, you know, he was acting in a comedy role. This movie, he was acting to act, and it was fantastic. And it was young De Niro, so he didn't have his distinct voice because this movie was made like 40 years ago. One of Martin Scorsese's first, and like it's just amazing. Like Martin Scorsese is an amazing director. Like The Wolf of Wall Street is amazing. He has so many amazing movies. Uh, you know, like I said, Taxi Driver. You know, if you get the chance, watch this movie. It might not be the movie for you, but hey, if you want a movie that'll really just interest you, you'll see kind of inside the mind almost of what a guy who has no he has literally nothing. Like he he works 12, 14 hour shifts. Goes to the porno feeders, then goes home and kind of just does whatever. And he just does all he does because he can't sleep, and he's really weird, and he has the most awkward conversations with people. 
and it's just hilarious. It's it's a great. It, well, oh, it's unintentionally hilarious. But this movie, it is a fantastic movie. If you like, I said you get the chance, check out Taxi Driver. It really like I I've heard about this movie forever, and I finally just sat down and watched it today, and it's like holy shit. This movie is really something. So, like I said, you get the chance. I recommend it. I give this movie a 9 out of 10. You get the chance. Definitely, like, watch it on Netflix. Buy it on Blu-ray. Do something. It's worth it. It's worth watching. Fantastic film. So, it's worth the stream. It's worth my time. Yes, it is completely. The hour and 50 minutes of this movie is worth your time. All right. I'll check that out at some point. Like, as you know, I didn't do any spoilers, really, like, as much. Like, a little bit, but, like, you know, because I didn't... If you ever decide to watch the movie, I don't want to completely spoil it for you. Yeah. But, nonetheless, now we are going on to the news, and the first news is movie news. Now, we don't have a lot of news this week. We have no TV news. And half of the movie news... I had, like, seven stories. Two of them I had to cut off because they were actually proven wrong, which made me... uh, That pissed me off. Uh, one of them I took off because I didn't think it was worth talking about in the end. And plus, today we got two more stories that I think, you know, they're basically one story, but they're intertwined. So I thought, hey, what the hell? So movie news. First off, we have a very interesting story. And this story is that in 2016, this around like the same time that that Batman Superman movie comes out, which is early 2016, Captain America 3 is already confirmed to come out in 2016 around the same time that that happens. Uh, They have not revealed what the title will be yet, but that will come, I guarantee you, within the next, probably next year. uh, Next year at Comic-Con, I guarantee you. And basically the whole thing with this is it looks like it's going to be the last Captain America. It looks like it's going to be the last movie that Captain America is in. So they've confirmed the third movie, so have they confirmed, like, who's going to be playing the characters? Uh, We know, okay, Chris Evans is confirmed to still be Cap, so this is going to be his last movie as Captain America. Oh, okay. Uh, I assume Samuel L. Jackson would be in it. Uh, there are other, like I said, um, I'm not sure, of course, the main villain, which I still, I've been saying since the first one, because if you saw the first Captain America movie, which I guess is a little bit of a spoiler, I think Bring Back Red Skull, it's so easy to do, because the way that they, you know, quote-unquote, killed him off in the first one, it's so easy to bring him back, because he kind of just goes into Asgard, or into space, well, not, he just goes into, like, the space deal, so whatever. Other realms, I don't fucking know. I'm confused about it, and so it's easy to bring him back. And basically, um, I'm assuming that this is where they kill him off. I think they're now. I don't think it's going to be like they did in the uh, Civil War storyline in the comics. But basically, because Chris Evans wants to retire, I think they're going to kill him off, and I think they're going to replace him with the new Captain America. And I would love to say who would. He, okay, basically, I'm going to say the same thing I said. I think either last week or the week before, when talking about movie news for Captain America, I think it was last week. Okay, basically, the whole deal is this. Okay, I know what they're going to do. I think they're going to kill him off, and then they're going to bring in this other dude who is the current Captain America in the comics. You know what I'm talking about? Fantastic. If not, if you don't want to know, then don't look in, into it. If you want to know, then if I, re- I would look into it and just look up who the current Captain America is, and you will see why it makes complete sense. Uh, like That's all I'm going to say. Like I said last week, if he's a guy who's already been in the movies. He's not a superhero or anything, but he's been in the movies. So and you put two and two together, I'm sure you can figure it out. But, uh, Jamie, what do you think about this news? You know, like, uh, I have no idea if you really like Captain America on his own. I know you like the Avengers. Like, what do you yeah. think about the fact that they're gonna, that this is going to be the last movie Chris Evans is in? Uh, I don't really think it's going to affect me all that much because, I mean, I'm not really a big fan of Captain America. I mean, it's not because I'm Canadian, but I just never really, you <laughs> know. Yeah, I mean, I've just never, um, i just never really been drawn to Captain America. So... For Chris Evans, you know, this would be his last um, go-around. Uh, again, doesn't really affect me all that much. Um, of course, you know, this may cause, like, a rift for some fans because, I mean, you know, you know, you know, people people are going to identify Chris Evans with Captain America. And it's really crucial that if they decide to reboot Captain America, they need to find the right person or else it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fall, fall flat. The thing with that is, I get the thing is, as long as they just re, they change, as long as they, if they go by the comics with who Captain America is currently, they'll be just fine. If but if they try to recast someone as Steve Rogers Captain America, there's gonna be a problem yeah. because they're gonna be like, oh, this is the same as Chris Evans. They need to. There's the easiest way to kill him off and just do like I said, just bring. In the, I I really want to say, but like if people get pissed off with spoilers and they're like, oh, I was spoiled with this movie because they don't know about the comics, so it's. 
it's a it's a sticky situation where I want to explain why I think why this is perfect, but like I said, you want to know why I think this. Look it up. It's really, really like I said, it's a fantastic idea, especially with this new one coming out because I think they can set they can set up they can set it up perfectly in this one, Avengers two, and then finally in Captain America three, which is untitled, which what the subtitle is going to be. Uh, it'll be like I said. I think it's gonna work out great. Yeah. And uh, yeah. basically, uh, that's really all our thoughts on it. Like I, I guess I, there's not really much you can talk about. Just Captain America three. Yeah. Uh, but basically, the next movie news, which really came out of this, came out of fucking nowhere. Is I literally just saw it retweeted under my timeline. Uh, it was confirmed that Pixar has confirmed that they are making The Incredibles two and Cars three. So they confirmed an incredible sequel ten years after it came out, <laughs> which pisses me off. Now I don't know. I don't really know. I mean, if they get Samuel L. Jackson back, I'll I'll, I'll watch it. Why not? So I love Sam Jackson. Yeah. Um. With cars. I don't give a shit about Cars Three. I don't. I I just I don't at all. Yeah, Cars. Um, cars has never been really like. Uh, I mean, like, I've seen it, but, I mean, it wouldn't be in, like, my top five. Um, but, but, yeah, as for Incredibles 2, I enjoyed the first one. Uh, the second one, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I probably will see it. Um, you know, like, I... <laughs> You know, they've really been messing around with movies that don't that don't need sequels lately. I mean like yes, they I, have. I mean like I know Space Jam 2 was uh, was was completely shot down. But just lately they've just been messing with movies that don't need sequels. So Incredibles 2 plus it's 10 years after it came out. Yeah, 10 years. And like, you know, a lot of people may jump on me because, well, Toy Story 3 came out 10 years after Toy Story 2, but yeah, but that's fucking different. There's a reason Toy Story 3 yeah, came out 10 years after. They made the story yeah. for it. Exactly, they hadn't made the story. Plus, the guy who voiced Slinky died, so they had to recast him. So, I actually didn't know that. I believe um, he died uh, 2000, I believe, uh, 2000, 2001. I think. Well, shit. Yeah. I never saw Toy Story 3, though, so I actually, like, I can't even say if that was good. Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. You haven't seen Toy So, wait, you haven't seen seen the third one? I, I haven't gotten around to it yet. It's been four years, I still haven't gotten around to it. <sighs> I watched the first two, though. Those are really good. Kayla, what are we going to do with you? I don't know. <laughs> You know, if it comes to net, is it on Netflix? Um, I don't believe it is. No. Well, if it comes to Netflix, then I will. Watch I it. got the box set. You know that friggin' like Toy Story three ten 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 disc Blu Ray pack that came out. I got that for Christmas one. Oh year. shit! I was pumped. I have that. I'm so happy I have that. Toy Story is my favorite kids Disney Pixar series. Basically, it's my favorite animated series of all time. Is Toy Story. And the third oh, it's one, one of mine too. I loved it growing up. And the third one, third one, had me in tears. Third one had me in tears. Not gonna lie. But um, anyways, as for the Incredibles, uh, I really don't think it needs a sequel. But if they think it's gonna work, then you know, give it a shot. Um. Get Sam Jackson back. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I'm not really... As, you know... And, like... Alright, this is, like, the first time I'm hearing this news. I did not know that The Incredibles 2 was was actually confirmed. Like, I had no idea. And yeah, I like, I don't tell you about the news before we record. Exactly. And I really don't... I'm really not all that excited about it. Uh, I'm, I'm not... Like, I would... I, I would be if this was, like, maybe, like, Finding 2009. Do Finding or... Dory? I'm excited for Finding Dory. I'm not. I don't... It's another one, like, I don't see why they're making a sequel ten years later. <sighs> Finding Nemo was so good. 
Finding I, I'm not saying Finding Nemo wasn't fucking the shit. It was the shit. I love that movie, but... Finding Dory, I think, was going to be... I don't know. Good. But as for the... I don't think the Incredibles were really all that iconic to really get a sequel, you know? I think they are. It's been ranked in, like, the top ten superhero movies ever. I and it's one of like it's supposed. It's one of the most well received. Uh, yeah, superhero I mean, movies to have never been based on comics. I mean, like, like, all right. I'm not saying it was a bad movie because it wasn't. It was really good. I liked it. I, I really, I really, really enjoyed it. But as for a sequel for it, I don't think I'm all that. I'm not all that crazy about it. Yeah, it's just I'm not. It's not something I'm gonna be really excited about. But like. Hey, if I get the chance to watch it at some point, I'll probably check it out. I like the first one. Yeah. What is it? Hey, so get Samuel L. Jackson back, and I will watch that movie no matter what. <laughs> he's not yeah, going to be then I think that's pretty much... He's not going to be uh, Yeah, I know, it's but Samuel L. Jackson. Movie. It's a children's movie. He didn't curse in the Avengers either, but it was still fucking awesome. <laughs> Then we go to video game news, and the first video game story is going to make Jamie squeal with excitement. If this, if this, I swear to God, if this, if this is about fucking Batman, I don't give a shit. I've said it the past two Dude. weeks, I don't care. Dude, that, okay, this, we're, we don't have Batman news this week. Okay, weekend. good, alright, then what is this news that's going to make me friggin' squeal? Because, okay, and people, just, just, just as a reminder... I have zero knowledge about any news that Caleb tells me. He says, hey, we got movie, game news, whatever. I say, okay. He doesn't tell me anything about it. So this is like live reaction. That is exactly what happens. This is like live reaction. All right, so what is it? Okay. The movie... The, uh, movie. Okay, this gaming, is the video game news. Gaming news, all right. <laughs> uh, someone from Rockstar okay. has come out and said... Hey, Red Dead Redemption 2 might be coming out, and it might be coming out by the end of 2014. Fuck yeah! Yes! Oh How excited does that make you? God, I'm... Uh, <laughs> yes. And it's funny, because, like, I just picked up Red Dead yesterday. Like, I just got it back. Oh my god, I know, like, it's just one of those deals where, like, whenever I saw that you, uh, had bought them again, I was like, yes, he's gonna be so fucking hyped when I tell him about this. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, I'm just... Uh, uh, Red Dead Redemption is my favorite game of all time, so that's why I cannot wait for a sequel. Red Dead... And it's, you know, it's not confirmed, it's a rumor, but, but Red Dead Redemption 2 is in the works, but the main rumor is that it might come out by the end of this year. Red Dead Redemption 2, okay, the only thing I have with it... If it's gonna don't make it about Jack. If it's if it's gonna be about Jack, please make him badass. Do not make him a wimp. Because at the end of Red Dead Redemption, he was a wimp. Yeah, I wasn't too big a fan of him at the end. I mean, I love the end of Red Dead Redemption, but like, I don't know. There was just something you know, about it I didn't like. You know what I actually would like is if Red Dead Redemption Two is like a prequel, so that way we know what exactly happened with John Marston and Dutch and Bill and Javier. You know, another thing I they, do, they could always pull a Grand Theft Auto and just kind of, like, have it be different every game. Like, have different cast of characters, same locations. This is true. Um, I mean, like, they could... For, um, um, I mean, like, they could... Yeah, uh, that could actually work. So. Yeah, exactly. Just, and, now, and you know what? You can have cameos. You can have a cameo from, like, Nigel West Dickens, which would be fucking fantastic. Nigel. Or something like that. I mean, it, you open up a lot of doors. And references. It's just like the sure. look at Grand Theft Auto V. How many references were there to GTA IV? Quite a few. There was a... Yeah, there were a lot. There was a reference of a... A uh, Eastern European guy that went quiet in LC. Uh, Packy was in there. Brucey was... Brucey isn't mentioned by 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 word. But, but his bull shark testosterone is featured on the internet on there. Um, yep, and there, like, there's, there are some good, there are, there's, uh, uh, if you, uh, get Packy to do a, uh, heist mission with you or whatever, uh, in one, in the first one you do, in the car ride, he'll start talking about Nico. Yes. 
Yeah, so Basically, yeah. that's the whole deal with, uh, like I said, Red Dead Redemption 2, it's in the works, and the rumor is that it could come out before the end of this year. I say this, I said Red Dead Redemption 2, it's so simple, in, in just a couple words, take my money now. I don't care. I don't care how much this goddamn game is. I don't care if it's two hundred dollars. I will buy it. it is. Next gen, current gen. I don't care if they only sell it on PS2. I'm getting it. Red Dead Red Dead Redemption was one of the best stories I have played in a long time. Oh, it's so Red Dead Redemption is seriously. It's my favorite game ever. John Marston is the definition of badass. Oh, John Marston was so fucking good. I forget who the guy is that voiced John Marston, but he did a perfect job. Yeah, he's like a really good voice actor. I've heard him oh, in a couple of other did. stuff. Like, he's great. Uh, he did a fantastic job voicing Marston. God, and Red Dead, Red Dead has one of the best, like, uh... And one thing is, look at Red Dead on, like, 360 PS3. The the environment was one of the best last gen, the old gen environments I've ever seen next to, like, Skyrim, maybe. You look at, bring Red Dead to next gen, and you look at GTA V with the technology Rockstar is using for their games. Oh, you put a game like Red Dead with their current stuff on next gen, it's going to be the best looking game ever. It's, you're probably going to have the most beautiful scene scenery in any game. Exactly. Like, I say the most beautiful scenery I've ever seen in all the... As far as the old gen, I can't speak for the current gen, even though I've played, like, about four games on it. I can't really speak for, like, Major League. But old gen, best three games, GTA V, uh, Red Dead, and Skyrim, as far as how beautiful the environment was, two of those are Rockstar games. Rockstar knows what they're doing when it comes to environments, and what they could do with next gen, I can only imagine how fucking good that would be. They're probably seeing dollar signs everywhere. Oh, yeah, they can make so much money off. And, oh, uh, this is something that is kind of unofficial, but there's also a rumor that they're going to re-release Red Dead on Next Gen. You know what? That just might convince me to go Next Gen. That just might convince me. That should convince you to go on ne- to get oh, uh, Next yeah. Gen. Oh, my God. Like I said, it's just sin. It's awesome. Yeah. And then the other video game news. Oh, yeah, I said we didn't have Batman game news this week, but this isn't really Batman news. <laughs> Okay. It, okay. Basically, it's okay. Basically, it's about what these guys are. The studio is going to do after the Arkham games are over. Uh, once Arkham Knight has been released and whatnot, uh, and you know it's done, they're not going to make any more Batman games. But they are their next game they have in mind is the most random game ever. And Jamie, you probably have never even heard of this thing in the DC comics, and that is the Suicide Squad. I honestly, you know what? I honestly don't think I've ever heard of that. I only know what they are because of Smallville and Arrow. If I had never watched either of those, I would not fucking know the hell the Suicide Squad was. <laughs> uh, for, I, I think that episode of Arrow this week is actually called Suicide Squad. It's just one of those weird things where Suicide Squad, it's got a lot, I mean, it's got, it's a very unknown team, but for the most part, they've got, uh, like, the people in it, like Harley Quinn, uh, Bane, Deadshot, Deathstroke, uh, people like that. That's basically, yeah, and, you know, and I think that's cool and everything. So basically, I have no, there's no news on what the fuck this game would be, but that's just they're just thinking about making a suicide, uh, a suicide squad game, basically. And I'm not, like I said, I have no idea. I don't know if it would be like you can switch around or. I have no fucking clue what this game would be, but that's just the news. There's a suicide squad game possibly in the works to be the next project for that whole studio after uh, Arkham Knight comes out. That's basically that. Take that what that take that for what it's worth. I don't know. I'm not too excited for it, but hey, maybe once I see some gameplay, I can get excited for it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's all we have for video game news. Jamie, do you have anything left to say about video game news? Red Dead Redemption 2. That's all I got. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Uh, then, basically, that's all of our media news, and now we're moving on to get the wrestling, and before we talk about Raw, we have our weekly top five. Now, Weekly top fives are, you know, wrestling-related most of the time. I think we've always done wrestling-related. I just always like to say most of the time. This week was top five greatest gimmicks throughout history. So, basically, gimmick. What Basically, gimmick, for those who don't know, I don't know why you wouldn't know, is the character, what your character is about, kind of, it leads to what you're doing, and, your, and you know, it affects your phones. It's all that stuff. So, basically, it's your character. A gimmick is your character. So, uh, Jamie, I'm going to let you go first with your top five. 
Alrighty, people. So my top five gimmicks. Now, for number five, a lot of you people are going to be surprised that this is on here. Muhammad Hassan. Oh, I didn't even think of him. I, for those of you that don't know me, Muhammad Hassan was a fantastic character. He's a guy, Arab American. He was hailed. He was hailed from Detroit, I believe, and. And, um, you know, WWE was, you know, trying to garner some, um, you know, I guess trying to garner some mainstream attention from the whole thing, you know, with Iraq and the war and stuff. So they created, so they created this character, Mu, Muhammad Hassan, his theme music was great, the manager that he had was great, uh, the guy could talk, and the guy could wrestle too, so he was really good. And it, it's a and, shame that they, they made a stupid mistake with the storyline and that fucked it up. Exactly. And WWE, they really messed things up with the Hassan character because they had to air something involving The Undertaker that involved masked men and it aired the same week as the London bombings back in 2005. And that's the only reason why they had to kill off the Hassan character. And you know what? I yeah, it was that. just a really dumb decision. It was WWE's fuck up, and they had to kill off the character because of it. So I mean, it's a shame that it only lasted from January till July of two, or I guess no, December of '04 to July of '05. It's a shame that it only lasted so long. But yeah, number five is Muhammad Assad. Number four is Kane. Now, Kane obviously debuted as the brother of. You talk about that corporate Kane. Are you talking about Big Red Monster Kane? I'm talking about Big Red Machine Kane. I talk about that pussy in the suit and and. Hey, corporate uh, Kane is badass, man. He's Mayor Jacobs to me. But anyways, <laughs> Kane, the Big Red Machine Kane, debuted as the Undertaker's brother. That's gotta be Kane. And. It was great. I mean, I mean, the storyline made sense. It had seemed like Kane had perished, had perished in a fire, came back, and and you know what? The first the first year that Kane that Kane was there was really creepy because he couldn't talk without using that thing that like you have to have um um up against your throat there. I mean, I mean, it was really really creepy. And Kane, you know, he was all about fire, setting things on fire. He had the Undertaker in a casket, lit that on fire, uh, electrocuted a man's testicles on live television, um, uh, burned Jr. live. Said man's mother on the stage. Tombstoned the then CEO on the stage. Choke slam Bischoff off the damn stage. It was crazy. So Kane. I think is a great, great gimmick, and uh, the, the character is awesome. Mayor Jacobs, that's different. Big Red Machine Kane, Big Red Monster Kane. He's a different type of awesome. Yeah. All right. Number three, Kurt Hennig, a.k.a. Mr. Perfect. Now, Mr. Perfect, it's self-explanatory. The guy was perfect. He could golf. You know, a perfect game. He could bowl. He could bowl a perfect game. He could score, or um, you know, uh, I mean, he scored. He scored baskets without even looking at the damn basket. I mean, the guy, the guy, the guy was just perfect, and he was so arrogant and cocky about it, and like the way he would just spit up his gum and then just kind of slap it, and it. I mean, Mister Perfect is just a very iconic character. Great, great gimmick, and honestly, I don't think anybody could have done it any better. And number two... Oh, yeah, I agree with you there. Number two, we got Mankind. Now, Mankind, obviously, you know, a guy uh, that... Um, I believe the premises behind the character is that he was, like, in a mental institution, or institution um, of some sort. And, you know, he was like a literal psychopath, like, um, you know, you know, um, I think, I think, I think there was one point 
during a match where where um I think he stabbed himself in the in the, in the uh, leg, pulling his hair out, uh, squealing like a damn pig, and his outro music was really really creepy. It was just a piano. Oh, that was when he did that for a while. That was great. Yes, and you know what? I wish that they would have kept that going because that was really really eerie. And um, you know. The way that he would just rock back and forth in the fetal position and he would be cutting his promos. I mean, Mankind is such a great character. And number one is The Undertaker. The Undertaker is the greatest gimmick, greatest character I have ever seen. The Undertaker, he is the dead man. He is an iconic character. The guy who has, like, mystical powers, can shoot lightning bolts on the stage, in the ring. CGI Um, lightning bolts. Yes. Um, (laughs) You know, buries people alive. He had the whole urn thing, caskets. I mean, um, the character is iconic. Undefeated at WrestleMania, 21-0. I mean, you, like, I really don't think that they, you know, I really don't think that a gimmick is ever going to top the character known as The Undertaker. And that's my top five. Makes valid points. My top five for this week is very simple. Now, number five, uh, top five greatest gimmicks. See, a gimmick gimmick is something important. A gimmick is something you can get a shitty gimmick like Los Matadores or Santino. You can get a great gimmick like some of the guys that you were mentioning on your list, some of the guys that are going to be mentioned on my list. Number five on my list Mankind. Mankind is a fucking fantastic gimmick. That, like you said, it was a mental war. Basically, the original concept for this character was that he wore an iron mask and like have a straight jacket. Of course, they kind of basically Mankind was basically uh, based off of Hannibal Lecter. If you really think about it, mm. <laughs> so it's okay. Like, hey, if it wasn't for Silence of the Lambs, which is one of my favorite movies ever, we might not have a Mankind character. And it was just fantastic. Like, everything about it, Mick pulled it off so well. Like, he would be insane. Like, he said, stabbing himself in the leg. Mind Games was such an intense, crazy match. Everything he did as Mankind was just fantastic. From, yes, from insane heel Mankind to uh, Rock and Sock Connection. Even though he kind of, the Mankind gimmick kind of became Mick Foley as it went on. It was still, at, at its peak, it, this gimmick was just fantastic. It's and slowly, everyone, it's I, whether, you hate or, whether you loved it or hated it, it, was, it made you think something. He slowly, like, transitioned in, into Mick Foley. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like, and basically, by, and by 2000, he was Mick Foley. Yeah. Because I believe his last pay-per-view ever as Mankind, as an active wrestler, was Armageddon 1999. He really, because Taboo Tuesday 2005, he did face Carlito as Mankind, but yeah. uh, as, as far as an active competitor who competed on a weekly basis, final pay-per-view, teaming up with The Rock against the New Age Outlaws, Armageddon 99. Uh, and, okay, so then number four, this is one that I don't think it's talked about enough, and that's The Brood. The Brood had a great gimmick. They were like, oh, they were basically vampires, or at least Gangrel was, and then Edge and Christian were like, they never really confirmed they were supposed to be vampires, they were his followers, is Gangrel Joe Carroll, uh, that's a, if you get that reference, you get a gold star. Uh, but basically, the whole deal with that is they were they were just awesome and badass. That they had one of the best entrances I've ever seen, like coming through the fucking up through the flames. That was fantastic. Just this, you know, this gimmick didn't go far enough. Like I think I think they were together like a year, not like maybe less than a year, and they could have gone so much farther with it. But you know, if they had, we might not have gotten the awesome Edge and Christian tag team that was hilarious and great. So you know, take it for what it's worth. Uh, number three is the Iron Sheik. Iron Sheik, much like Muhammad Hassan. <laughs> Iron Sheik, not only does he break your back and make you humble, uh, he his gimmick was fantastic because he was the most hated heel in his prime. I mean, when he was WWE champion, those people wanted to fucking kill him. And when he was with Nikolai Volkov, they wanted to kill him even more. But his gimmick was that he was from Iran, which he, which he is. He's originally from Iran. And basically, he's just an Iranian who he's completely, he hates America. And like, oh, America, puh. You know, all that great shit. Iron Sheep just got, he was one of the most hated heels of all time. And he just got the fans to fucking hate his guts. It's fantastic. But nowadays, 
Iron Sheik, the, t- the times have changed. Now we all sit back and laugh at Iron Sheik's weird, nonsensical tweets about how <laughs> Miley Cyrus has the raisin balls, Hulk Hogan has the ant dick, they should all be fucked by 50 dead dogs, break their backs, make them humble. Well, Iron Sheik, fucking fantastic. Number two on this list is The Undertaker. So who's number one? Basically, Undertaker, like you said, his gimmick, whether it was original Undertaker uh, Ministry of Darkness Undertaker, current Phenom Undertaker, or just any American Badass, any version of The Undertaker was fucking fantastic for over 20, for a long ass time, what is it, like now 23 years that he's been doing this gimmick? Yep. And it's just, oh, it's great. Like I said, he is just, he is scared children. He has done everything with this gimmick. He's crucified people. He's sacrificed people. He has... He tried to marry Stephanie McMahon. Not in the IW... That, this is true. He tried to <laughs> marry Stephanie McMahon. And in, I'm not talking IWC terms here. He buried people. By buried, I mean buried. I don't mean like, oh, you buried him. I mean he buried, like, literally, legitimately dirt. Legitimately involved. dirt with a shovel. In a grave. Yes. Not the shit you accused Triple H of. <laughs> uh, it's just, yeah, like, Undertaker... He was fantastic. He's just one of the most iconic wrestlers of all time. One of the most iconic gimmicks ever. One of the most loved gimmicks ever. But he's not my number one. Now, number one, you must be thinking, who can number one be? There are so many great gimmicks, Caleb. Who would your number one be? Is it Curry Man? Could it be Curry Man? Could it be a real man's man, Steven Regal? He's a (laughs) man. Could it be Doink the Clown? Well, let me tell you something. It's none of those gimmicks. Uh, despite how much I love Curry Man. Uh, number one on my list, greatest gimmick of all time, in my opinion. This gimmick will never, I, I, I can't, it's a gimmick that I don't know, you can't, it's a gimmick that can never be done by anyone else, and it's been tried to be done by other people. Uh, the exact gimmick can never be done. Like, we've seen it in different forms with guys, and it's worked, but as far as this, this gimmick and its purity, just this gimmick was so great, it was an essence of its time, it came, it came 20, this gimmick, like, was so early, and at the time, in the 80s, people were like, oh my god, this gimmick is insane, I hate this dude, oh, I hate him so much, you see where I'm going here, because let me tell you something, you see, I can't really put a price on who my number one on this <laughs> list is, you, you can't put a price on it, but the number one gimmick of all time, in my opinion, is the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase, <laughs> this dude was fucking fantastic, <laughs> Everything about him was fucking awesome. Jamie, you really liked my little, like, segue into that. With yeah, the price deal, I did. As soon as you said, you can't really put a price on this guy, I'm like, oh, my God, I know exactly who he's talking about. Now, this isn't just because I've been doing my whole marathon of starting, uh, watching every pay-per-view from WrestleMania 1 on, but, dude, I've, been, I've loved DiBiase for the longest time. DiBiase is fantastic. Whether it was making a small child bounce a basketball and then disappointing him and making him just cry, or making a young Rob... <laughs> And kiss your sweaty foot. Million Dollar Man would humiliate the audience. He would humiliate the wrestlers by shoving $100 bills in their mouths. Oh, my God. It was just... And that's didn't not healthy, he pay, man. That could have been in a strip didn't, pooch. Didn't he pay the lifeguard to, like, shoo away everybody that was, like, at, like, the public pool? So that way, like, the pool was all his. Yep. <laughs> and let's not forget... DiBiase also... Look at the people he had around him. Virgil, who Jamie has a history of Virgil. <laughs> Hey, Jamie, what is your jacket again? Oh, Royal Rumble. Uh, Then, we, you know, IRS man. Million Dollar Man opened up so many doors for so many great characters, except for his son, because his son tried to become him, and that didn't work. As soon, all right, yeah, like, as soon as he came out with the Million Dollar title, I thought, yeah, this is the beginning of the end for him. There you go, this man. His own title because he couldn't win the WWE title. Not, not the beginning of the end of the genesis of McGillicuddy. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the beginning of the end of DiBiase. <laughs> Which is, by the way, one of my favorite promos because it was so epic to watch. <laughs> oh my god, that was a terrible promo. <laughs> Oh, man, but Ted DiBiase, Million Dollar Man, the things he would do, he tried to buy the WWE title, he main evented at WrestleMania, which was well-deserved, in my opinion. Uh, he also, then the next year, faced Brutus Beefcake. Take that for what it's worth. Uh, God, the dude, is, and now he's a preacher, go figure. 
Yeah. Uh, and like I said, man, the Million Dollar Man. Now he tried to kind of rekindle his old magic in WCW with the NWO, but I, I didn't think that worked out very well. No. Like I said, you know, anytime the Million Dollar Man randomly pops up, or when he went into the Hall of Fame, anytime, just the way he laughs and like I will never his Hall of Fame speech for Christ's sakes. It literally Hall ended Fame. with the phrase "Let the money rain." DiBiase's Hall of Fame speech, I would, pro- I would probably put in my top five. That was that was one of my favorite speeches ever. Oh, that was so fantastic! I mean, I really, I fucking, uh, I will never forget DiBiase. It was the first, ma- uh, uh, it was the first Hall of Fame I watched live. So okay. it was awesome. DiBiase yeah. going in was fantastic. Oh man, but that's my top five. See, and oh, interestingly enough, my number one brought. In, if there was my number one brought your number one in, I think that's interesting. This is true. DiBiase or the or the mysterious partner of DiBiase's team in Survivor Series was the Undertaker. Ah, uh, so much greatness! I love Million Dollar Man. So fantastic. One of, I think I, I I think I believe a few weeks ago, uh, a couple months ago, we did a top five heels, and wasn't Million Dollar Man my number one there too? I believe so. Yes, I, he was. It was either him or Sheik. I don't remember. But uh, like I said, I love DiBiase. I'm a huge fan. Uh, there's and like I said, uh, God, his gimmick. It would like they could never recreate this gimmick. No, it's not. No, it's not going to happen. You had the right guy playing it. You had. It was. It was at the right time. I mean, it was. Um, it was. It was great. Yeah, so, uh, moving on. Yeah, I mean, yeah. okay, moving on. Uh, that is our top five for this week, and now we've got our Raw discussion. But there is Raw. Raw, Raw was pretty damn good this week. Uh, they're built, the road to WrestleMania is getting hot and heavy, not in a sexual way, uh, unless they have, like, a Braun panties match, but that seems very unlikely. Uh, God, I just, like I said, this, yeah, this match was really, like, what, what? why did I just say this match? This what show. What are talking about? This show. This show was fucking awesome. It was. You know, um... <clears throat> the build... You know what? These past two weeks... They have really saved Mania. Oh, yeah. Like, people were bitching. And I was, like... I was... I'm excited for WrestleMania no matter what. But in the back of my mind, I was like, is this WrestleMania going to be good or not? And now there's no doubt in my mind, I think this is going to be a good Mania. I'm excited. Yep. Um... Yeah, like, I've even noticed, like, folks on my timeline saying that, yeah, I'm now sold on WrestleMania 30. I think it's going to be really good. And these same people just last month were complaining, saying WrestleMania 30 is going to be the worst show, is going to be, is, will be, like, the worst Mania of all time. And honestly, I don't think anything could be worse than 9. So, <laughs> I don't think that. No. <laughs> God, there were, there were some shitty ones. Ugh, there were some shitty ones. Yes. Look at WrestleMania 4. That was awful. 4, 9, um, 11, 2, two uh, 27 was bad, but not the worst. Yeah. Um, basically, moving on to the actual Raw discussion. So we opened up with the, the game, uh, Triple H. Now, Triple H, as you all know and love, well, as you all, for some, me and Jamie love. As you Jamie, all Jamie, know, he's your favorite of all time. yes, Hunter is my number one favorite of all time. Uh, it's just, uh, so basically he comes out and is talking about WrestleMania and whatnot, and then I believe, is, did Batista come out first or was it Orton? I believe it was Batista. All right, so Batista came out, Vince Orton came out, and they all started arguing about how, oh, you know, Daniel Bryan is, is the triple threat. It's like, you don't think I can beat Daniel Bryan? And they're, like, basically really putting doubt, you know, like, oh, Triple H can't beat Daniel Bryan, and it makes Triple H all sad. And then he's like, you know what? If there's I beat gonna, Daniel Bryan, I'm going to be in the title match instead of him. There's going to be a triple threat match at WrestleMania 30. And, you know, something like this has never really happened before. I mean, like, besides the tournament from four, um... Uh, ten to a degree because we had Yokozuna versus Luger. Yes. Uh, for the WWE title, where the winner would defend against Brett later that night. Yes, this is true. Yeah. But um, but you know, with that being said, it hasn't been done for a while. It's been twenty years since then. Oh yeah, it's been a long ass time. Yeah. 
Like, double duty at WrestleMania isn't something that people are used to anymore. It used to be like, oh, especially at WrestleMania 4, Savage had four matches. People, people, in, people in this day and age are lucky enough to even get on the card, let alone do double duty on the card. Oh, yeah, exactly. And Daniel Bryan is going to be. Because I know some people are like, oh, Triple H is going to bury him. Nope. Daniel Bryan is winning both matches at WrestleMania, folks. I guarantee you, it's what they've been building since SummerSlam. Yep. It's going to happen. Yep. Uh, and you know what, people? This is where your patience finally pays off. It all started at SummerSlam. Or lack thereof. Yeah. Started at SummerSlam. Bryan, Bryan has been going through uphill battle after uphill battle after uphill battle. And now he's finally getting a shot at WrestleMania. Duke main event in WrestleMania, which is, hey, the best part about this is it takes the spotlight off of Punk, because Punk was originally supposed to face Triple H, and now Daniel Bryan beating Triple H and winning that triple threat match is going to make his title win that much sweeter. Yeah. Oh, which, 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 by the way, speaking of Punk, maybe we should just mention how, you know, he was on Talking Dead. This oh, week. he was on, uh, okay, I don't watch The Walking Dead, I don't care, <laughs> but I checked out The Talking Dead, and he was, he literally called himself Phil Brooks. Like, his thing said Phil Brooks. Yes. And as much as I've lost respect for him within 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 the past month and a half or so, I will say this: CM Punk, Phil Brooks, whoever you want to call him, looks a lot better. Yeah, he looks a lot less stressed out. He looks he he looks like he's been sleeping. Yeah, because there's one thing I've always noticed is Punk, I don't think he sleeps very much when he's on the road. No, and you know what, now, and you know what, if the Royal Rumble this year is the last we're ever going to see see, see a CM Punk, at least, at least he's doing better. At least, at least, at least it looks like he's really enjoying himself for the first time in a while. And whatever, no matter what I think about him taking his ball and fucking off, you know, I guess it is nice to see someone enjoying themselves. So whatever, uh, whatever he's doing, I don't really care. But, you know, yeah, yeah there's that. So then, uh, I'm trying to think. Um, so yeah, the opening segment, you know, uh, oh, Batista got RKO'd, went backstage, and said, I don't know why I came back. And then, yeah, that happened, which set up for Daniel Bryan versus Randy Orton in a notice qualification match, which is Daniel Bryan versus Randy Orton part 25. <laughs> And that, oh, it was actually a really good match, but um, the kendo stick was, is the new like steel said, chair. Some, so let's, oh yeah, kendo stick is the new steel chair. <laughs> um, basically, we got some useless stuff like Goldust versus Fandango was the closest we got to useless. Like, I don't understand why that match happened. I will say this: the beginning of, the, of that match actually did make me laugh because Goldust was, you know, like oh, that was hilarious. Like, you know, like you know, in doggy fashion, like you know, just. Going up to Fandango and just freaking him out. This is, if that is everything. I've always loved Gold Dust. I love him. He's kind of in a more serious gimmick now with his in this tag team. But hey, you know what? I still like comedic Gold Dust. Was great. Oh so, yeah. So you know, there's that. There's that like that match. Uh, that's all I can really say about that match. You know, uh, the Real Americans beat the tag team champions, the Usos, in tag team uh, in tag team action, of course. And, uh, like, it was a really good match, and it looks like the Real Americans, if they split, it looks like it's either going to happen at Mania or after WrestleMania. So I'm assuming at this point that, and I don't know what you think about this, but it looks like we're getting at WrestleMania, if I had to guess, Usos versus Real Americans versus New Age Outlaws versus the Road Brothers. Which, honestly, is a match I wouldn't mind seeing. Because, you know, again, it gets a lot more guys on the card, card, and then that way you have all those spots left to fill up for the Battle Royal. Yeah, that leaves a lot of tag teams out of the Battle Royal. Exactly. And I think, um, and really, the only tag team that's in the Battle Royal at this point is Rybaxel. Oh, yeah, that is true. And then yeah. I guarantee you Los Matadores and 3MB are going to end up in it somehow. Oh, yes, McIntyre, Slater, and Mahal will all will all somehow be in there. Uh, you know what? You know what? I can even see Torito being in there at some point. Oh, yeah, you know he's going to be in it. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and, um, oh, yes, and also uh, the storyline with the Shield and Kane. Who exactly knows where that's going? Okay, so basically, Kane came out and accused Jerry Lawler of starting of helping Brian with the Occupy Raw deal, 
and then the shield came out and they acted like they were going to attack Jerry Lawler. I almost said Jambalaya. In my head, Jambalaya. I almost said Jambalaya. I don't know why. <laughs> um, but then they kind of just turned face or tweener or, and they attacked Kane. So, the Real Americans, I can, I see the direction they're going in where they're probably going to lose at Manny and then beat the shit out of each other. Real the Shields, what the fuck oh, okay, are they okay, doing? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Um, I thought yeah, like, but the up. Shield, I have no idea what they're doing. With the because shield, they literally just I, last week were acting like they were going to break up. I think, uh, I actually think turning them face is a good idea because, you know, it buys them a few more months. Yeah, but I mean, I, I've, I'm just saying, I really wanted to see them have a triple threat match at WrestleMania. Yeah, but um, I don't think, uh, I don't really see that happening at this point. Um they don't have time to build it now. Exactly. So, if anything, um, I think actually someone told me on Twitter saying that um, that uh, they think it should be the Shield versus Kane and the Ascension. Uh, that I don't see happening. Uh, no, they don't have time to bring them up in two weeks and exactly. give them a WrestleMania spot. I, um, I mean, like, I wouldn't, you know, I would be okay with it, but... You know, again, there's only there's two Raws left until WrestleMania, and you know you can't just bring up a new tag team like that and say, yeah, these guys. Honestly, I see all four. Members. I see. I think they're gonna have the Shield and Kane go into the WrestleMania Battle Royal. Unfortunately, that I could. Eh, yeah, that I could probably see happening, and then like you know that way, maybe Kane tosses out all three guys, or uh, you know. Now, if like now if the Shield are in that match, then my prediction for who wins changes. Roman Reigns. Yeah, I think if Roman Reigns is in that battle royal, I think he's winning it. That would be a really good start for him. Yeah, WrestleMania debut, winning a Memorial Battle Royal for Andre the Giant. That's a great way to start off your WrestleMania career. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, and as for uh, the. Okay, now, as for the Battle Royal, I believe now, the only name I can think of that's or that was added is uh, Big Show. Yeah, Big Show's in it, uh, they're, and they had an eight-man tag team match, which proves they're actually building this Battle Royal, and that's great. Which is, which is really, really good. And you know what? I think now, even though they only have two Raws left, they're doing everything right with WrestleMania at this point. They are. They're doing everything right now. And yeah, sure, a lot of people were complaining like, oh, Mania's going to suck because Batista won the Rumble. Oh, it's going to suck because Orton retained at the Chamber. People, now it's getting better. You just got to give them time. If they gave you everything... Yes, exactly. Like, they fine. I would, like I said, I, I was worried that it was going to be bad, but like in the back of my head, I was worried, but I never said anything on social media. But then finally now... I'm just I'm looking forward to this WrestleMania. I now, think it's gonna be great. Now I think everybody is taking a big sigh of relief. They're doing everything right. But then, the, I think people right. still, or I think the stupid people still think that Triple H is gonna beat Daniel Bryan. The sm- it it's a very slim chance that he's going to. I mean, I've seen I I've, I've, I, I mean I've seen the idea of how. What if Brian and Triple H end in a no contest, and then it becomes a fatal four way? Yeah, that's that. a, that's something we've talked about a lot. But I don't like. I think, but it, as much as I think that that would be a good idea, then they should have just made it a fatal four way because then their match earlier makes no sense, and it, it's almost like, oh my god, I totally had the idea in my head. Fuck, I completely dropped what I was thinking. <laughs> Shit. Okay, uh, I don't remember what I was saying, but um. They should have just made it a fatal four-way because if they do the no contest deal, and then they make it a fatal four-way, then that accomplishes nothing at all. Exactly. And it's one of those dumb. Okay, okay. I fuck. I can't remember. I had something really good to say. I just remembered it for two. Fuck. (laughs) I'm getting pissed off. I can't remember what I was gonna say. Ugh. Shit. Um. But yeah, like I said, it just. No, it's not good. You do the fatal four-way. Have Brian. Well, I'm not against it. I'm just saying it would be... It's, it, if they were going to make it a Fatal 4-Way, they should have just made it a Fatal 4-Way instead of doing the whole, oh, if one of us wins, we get in the match. Have Brian overcome the odds once and for all. Yes, that is what this... That is what this... That is what has been being set up since fucking SummerSlam. Exactly, people. You have waited since August for this to happen. And you're going to get it. 
Now it's happening. <laughs> Daniel Bryan is going to be the main event. Right? And the thing I love is people are already turning on Daniel Bryan. Exactly. The fans who have been, for months have been saying he's been getting screwed, WWE sucks. Now they're starting to say, oh, Daniel Bryan sucks. That, that segment wasn't good. Uh, and it's just the same thing happened halfway through Punk's title reign. The same thing happened when Ziggler came back from his concussion during his world title reign that was only five weeks long. The same off. thing that happened to Cena when he was just becoming a huge deal. Yes, it's one of those things where, like, for months now, these people, for years even, these people have been high on Daniel Bryan, especially this last year. And all of a sudden, he starts, like, and then, because the IWC wants something to bitch about. And Daniel Bryan is getting screwed on pay-per-view, which he's obviously going to eventually overcome the odds. Then they can't, and then they can bitch, and that makes them happy because they can say WWE's doing it wrong. Then WWE starts doing something right where Daniel Bryan is going to be in the main event of fucking goddamn WrestleMania, and he's going to win the world WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And it's like, once Daniel Bryan wins the WWE World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania 30, after beating Triple H and then winning the Triple Threat with Orton and Batista, he's holding both titles. 80,000 people are screaming yes, and Daniel Bryan closes WrestleMania fucking 30. What do these fans have to bitch about? Nothing. The IWC, so it makes them mad they can't bitch, so now they hate Daniel Bryan. The IWC is the definition of the phrase, you can't please everybody. Yes, exactly. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying everyone has turned on Daniel Bryan, because I have. I've, I've loved Daniel Bryan for the four years. I didn't know who the fuck he was before he came to NXT, but I've looked up oh, his man. old Ring of Honor stuff <laughs> since. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's just one of those things where... Like I, I've, I've been a fan of him ever since the since I've seen him. I've said this dude is good. This dude's talented. No matter how generic he looked at first. And now people, it's all it's all gonna pay off. Just wait. And speaking of which, uh, I told Jamie I was t- talking to you about this. Uh, I believe it was last night or the night before on Skype. Uh, I told you people are always comparing Brian to Benoit. Another creepy comparison is this WrestleMania 19. Chris Benoit was involved in a tag team championship match and at WrestleMania 20 in the main event won the World Heavyweight Championship. <laughs> WrestleMania 29, Daniel Bryan is involved in the WWE tag team championship match and WrestleMania 30 is involved in the World Heavyweight Championship. <laughs> I'm um, just saying, the comparisons are so goddamn eerie. <laughs> it's uncanny. It's crazy. And hey, I'm just saying. <sighs> Okay, I was gonna make a. I'm not gonna make a joke. No. I'm not gonna make a cheap Benoit. No, no. But... I could say I can make a joke about Bree, but I'm not. I'm not. Right. I'm not I'm gonna get that heat. Yeah. Oh, and also, uh, I guess the last. Oh, or, or no wait. Uh, the two. Two more things from Raw. Uh, Cena and Wyatt. Now. Oh, this buildup was great. They're making a huge deal about this as a part of Cena's legacy. And the fact that Cena has to win this one. Now, see, honestly, an Eminem song appeared on television. Yes, and an Eminem song was on WWE, was featured on WWE TV, and is apparently one of the theme songs for WrestleMania 30. That's fucking awesome. Uh, but yeah, uh, they're making this huge deal about Cena's legacy. Now, that really gives me the impression that Cena is going to win. Cena doesn't... Really? It gave me the exact opposite. Cena really... Cena doesn't really need to win. Now, I'm not hating on Cena. I like Cena. Always have, and probably always will. But... He doesn't need to win this one. Wyatt needs this win. Okay, here's the thing. What I took from all of that is I almost took it as, oh, if Cena needs to win this match as part of his legacy, I take that as Cena's going to lose. Yeah, um, it's just that, you know, I've seen in past storylines where, like, you know, they've made a big deal about Cena's history and Cena's legacy and whatnot, and, you know, how everything, and, like, you know, everything matters in this match. Like, Cena must win this match or else everything he's done is, you know, pretty much been for nothing. Uh, that's happened before, or, you know, so I've seen that happen before, um, but yeah, he does not need to win this one. I, I don't think he is, I don't think they're gonna, because I think they know Bray Wyatt is the future of the company. Oh yeah, and the guy, the guy can work a mic. As Husky oh, Harris... He's like, he's like the, he's the Matthew McConaughey of promos right now. As... As Husky Harris, I thought that he was going to go nowhere. Then, then all of a sudden, Bray Wyatt comes in, and I'm like, holy crap, where did this come from? 
Now I see him as a future world champion. Yep. And the whole backwoods cult deal is phenomenal. It's great. And, you know, Wyatt, he... Wyatt is just great. I mean, overall, he's just really good. He could use a little more improvements to where on a weekly basis he's having better matches. Yeah. Uh, but like I said, he's had a, he's a great tag team match competitor, and his match with Daniel Bryan at the Rumble proves something. Exactly. Um, if anything, his match with Bryan at the Rumble proved that Wyatt can not only work a mic, he can work a match. He knows how to tell a story better than a lot of guys who have been doing it for ten years. Yep. Alrighty, and the... The last thing is the last segment of Raw where Daniel Bryan got his ass beat down oh, by Triple so H. Good. This is how you build up a story. So this is how you build up a story, people. This is how it's done. And everybody's saying, and I swear, the people that are saying that Bryan... Buried, you know, buried is probably one of the most annoying words I've ever heard. Yes, it is. Brian did not get buried in this segment, folks. You know, you know what he did? He got his ass beat down in a segment. This it's gonna happen. This all, I mean, if anything, this proves that Brian is gonna come back, rise up from the ashes, and kick the holy hell out of Triple H. Exactly, and some people don't see it as that for some reason. But this, I mean, it was a good ten minutes of Daniel Bryan getting his ass whipped by what it felt like old Triple H, and that's the thing that was yep. so good. It felt like like mid two thousands Triple H. He the shit, and for the fake. Finally, it, they said these aren't even real cops <laughs> because they, Stephanie had those guys go out to arrest Bryan. And it's like no, these guys aren't real cops, and it was all work, at, which of course, in which that's what wrestling is, but. Yeah. Like, the whole storyline was that, like, oh, Triple H and Stephanie tricked Brian into thinking there was problems there. And then they just, ah, oh, they just beat the shit out of him. And Stephanie slapped him, and Daniel was screaming, you hit like a girl. He was handcuffed. We got a pedigree with the handcuffs. Triple H then ripped off his shirt, and him and Stephanie made out for a second over him. And then Triple H just grabbed the microphone and screamed, oh, ring! Oh, and I don't, rem- oh, I don't remember what else he said. And he was, like, My all about ring, shit. And he was just ring, fantastic. Our, our place or something, or whatever. But, uh, yeah, it was... Uh, yeah, it was fantastic. It, you know, and it was great. And people, for those of you that are saying that Brian is buried again, if anything, you are giving what WWE wants. You are giving them a reaction. That's exactly what they want out of you. Yes, this is one of the best, most well-built feuds I've seen in a long-ass time. If you don't react... Then WWE knows that they did something wrong, but because you're reacting, yeah, exactly, they know they're doing they're doing a good job. And people were legitimately concerned in the crowd. They were like, "Holy crap! I can't believe Daniel Bryan." Wait, Bryan Jamie, Jamie, guess what, Jamie, guess what just happened? What? Jamie, guess what just happened? What? On Twitter, I got added to a list called TV Junkies. I don't know why. Oh, what the hell? What was Who that? is this, Bob Goodman? I've been added. Whatever. To anyway, back to what you're saying. I'm sorry, I interrupted really, you. Yeah. Oh, this is the second time this week I've been added to a random list. Oh. Yeah, but, um, but yeah, so anyways, uh, Daniel Bryan, Triple H, they're building, they're building this up right. This is, this is, this is going to be great. And you know what? I am now really excited for Raw next week. Oh, I am too. And plus on SmackDown, we're getting John Cena versus Luke Harper. And Luke Harper is a pretty damn good in-ring worker, so I think that'll be a good match. Oh, yeah, definitely. So yeah, um, overall, I thought that Raw was a really good show, and uh, yeah, and yeah, that uh, that yeah, show. Raw was fantastic. Uh, like I said, it was just one of those things where I enjoyed the hell out of it the entire time. It was one of it's, they they've been so consistent, like for the what second or third week in a row. Yeah, yeah, third week in a row, they've been extremely great and extremely consistent. Road to WrestleMania is finally picking up, and I think WrestleMania 30 is going to be a damn good show. WrestleMania 30 will definitely be a really good show. Now, uh, now, uh, yes, it will. And now, uh, we are kind of at, in the closing moment, so, uh, basically, guys, we had a good show. Of course, uh, just a quick recap before we do our plugs. Spider Man, great movie. You should watch it. One of the best superhero movies 
just ever. It was fantastic. Taxi Driver, amazing movie. Watch it. Uh, you know, we heard that Captain America 3, you heard my ideas, they should, you know, they're probably going to kill him off and do the whole thing they're doing currently in the comics. Uh, Incredibles 2 is happening, you know, whatever, get back to Samuel L. Jackson. Cars 3, who gives a shit, really? Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 if, is in the Red works and comes out at the end of this year. I will be a happy Caleb. Uh, and then we've got uh, a Suicide Squad game. I don't think anyone cares about that either. <laughs> but whatever. Uh, and then... We got the top five, we, you know, top five greatest game mix. It was both of our thoughts. We had a couple of the same thoughts on them, but, you know, it was different. And then Rob, Rob was fantastic. It's building up WrestleMania really well. All the rivalries had somewhat, you know, every single rivalry had built. And I think that's the best thing. Even though Paul Heyman is kind of carrying this Lesnar Undertaker feud, still yeah. making people excited for it. Yeah. All right, so. Um, anyway, uh, let's get our plugs done. So, James, why don't you go first yeah. with your plugs? Uh, if you want, you guys can follow me on Twitter at Jamie Lee Mac. And also, um, uh, do not forget to like, comment, uh, subscribe to e- to youtube.com forward slash EVTV production. You can check out CNC reviews. Wrestling with Mac is up there. We do some random videos here and there. Caleb does his, uh, his random reviews of TV shows, movies every now and then. So definitely check those out. Yep, really True Detective cool. Review is on the channel. Check that out if you've watched it. And... I'm going to be starting a three-part series, which I plan on recording tonight, three-part series that is reviewing all three seasons of American Horror Story thus far. All right. And, uh, and yeah, that's it from me. Uh, just don't forget to subscribe, youtube.com forward slash EVTV production. And you can follow me at the Awesome Clark. Follow my backup account at Caleb Clark J. I don't know why it's called that. That's not even my middle name. Uh, and that's going to be my main account soon, and I'll change the app, so... Yeah. More of that to come, and yeah, that's all my shit. The fucking show doesn't have a Twitter account anymore because there's no point in having a fucking Twitter account. <laughs> and like I said, uh, you know, uh, you can subscribe uh, youtube.com forward slash EVTV production, and there's that. Watch Wrestling with Mac. Uh, watch the interview reviews here every week. We upload on Tuesdays. Watch my solo reviews. Watch our topic videos, which we've only done one of, and we get off track when we try to record them. <laughs> uh, so that's all, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your record, for uh, tuning in to CNC Reviews tonight. Uh, I am Caleb. That is Jamie. And, well, it could be morning when you're listening to this. Whatever. I'm Caleb. That's Jamie. Uh, thanks for listening. I hope you guys had a fantastic time. And be sure to tune in next week. Uh, and we're signing off. Goodbye. All right. See you later, folks.